Hi everyone, it's Brian here at Bradley Branch. I hope you're all doing incredibly well in these crazy times. Um, I have been doing quite a bit of work in the garden and I just wanted to show you what I've been up to. So let's take a look. So it's just about time for us to start planting for the fall. Um, we did have a lot of issues with cabbage worm over the summer. So our Brussels sprouts and some of our cabbages even got really, really torn up and they actually didn't make it. So I actually built this little makeshift tent out of some tool or this mesh fabric. And I just tied it here with some sturdy ties. And it's really easy for it to come undone and I could lift it and bring it back down if I need to. But I think just having this protection while we wait for the summer to cool down is highly appreciated by our seedlings. And I actually went ahead and planted a few things already. Um, and I planted them diagonally and far more spaced out because last time we planted just way too much cauliflower and way too much Brussels sprouts. And I think them being so abundant and so close together made it really competitive and hard for them to get all the nutrients that they really needed. Oh, how'd you get in there? It's a little froggy. Hello. How are you, little one? Oh. So I'm actually so excited to see this frog in our bed right now. I think one of the keys to our success in the springtime was actually having frogs living in our bed. And it really helped our, our cauliflower um, and our cabbage stay safe when it started to warm up and more pests started to show up because they just kept eating them and having like a natural order of things. Um, which is ideally how I want to garden. I want to work in harmony with nature and have a natural ecosystem taking place in the garden because then everything just kind of takes care of itself. So back to the tent. Um, I really hope it helps deter our cabbage worm situation because I would really love to have these over the fall. I didn't even have the seeds out for that long in our little shed area over there and they got eaten up so quick. So as soon as I saw some of them get chewed up, I knew it was time to get them planted and well protected. So hopefully this does the trick. Now I was thinking of doing another tent over here, but I'm not sure if I actually want to plant that many brassicas, at least in these areas. I think I want to space them out a little bit. I have this bed here ready and prepared and still debating what I want to plant there, either pumpkin, Actually, I think it's going to be pumpkin because we had kale there last time and it was there for a really long time. So I don't think it would be wise to plant more kale there. And in this bed, I'm thinking of planting some some root vegetables like carrots and radishes. Um, we did have cabbage in here and broccoli that fully developed and matured. So I'm sure it depleted quite a bit of the nutrients. But carrots and radishes are pretty light feeders, so I don't think it'll be too hard for them to grow in here. And I did add a layer of compost on top, so there's definitely still nutrients to work on from here. So I'm not sure if you guys remember, but we had Swiss chard in here and a lot of it. Um, <laughs> too much, actually. I think they were competing a lot for water and nutrients and it actually stunted a lot of their growth. So I got rid of quite a few of them, but I moved some over there under our peach tree, and I'll tell you why. They're undergoing a little bit of a shock from the transplant, but Swiss chard is pretty hard, it's pretty tough, so I think it'll, it'll make it through. But a few reasons why I moved it over here was, for one, allowing them to have more space to grow out, and two, after looking into it, Swiss chard actually prefers more shade than sun. So I think being under this wide growing peach tree right now is really going to help them perk up and get through the rest of the summer. Oh my god guys, a quick update on our golden, our royal golden. We had one growing before but it got too heavy and it actually snapped off the vine but this is the most mature one we've had so far. And once it turns completely yellow it should be ready to go. Oh it's almost there, I can't wait. So I was really hoping we wouldn't get to this point. I had a lot of faith in our chickens, but sadly they got into the garden quite a bit and ravaged a lot of things. So 
I went ahead and built a temporary fence around the edge until we can figure something else out. Um, honestly, if they really wanted to, they could just jump over this, but I think having a barrier is better than having nothing, and it just lets them know that at least this area is off limits. And if I do find them in here, I just grab my hose and spray at them, and they run away. <laughs> but hopefully this will help. Now our two remaining corns, the black maize corn and the glassdrum corn, are almost ready to harvest. The peaches and cream and, har and japonica completely matured, so I took them out. But what I actually did was rather than pull them out, I cut them at the base and I'm letting their roots deteriorate into the soil to keep a natural and organic um, ecosystem going under the soil. And I actually put some compost on top, and I'm thinking of planting our thousand head kale here and make it like a really beautiful centerpiece because it's going to take up a lot of room. It's a huge, huge kale and it, we actually still have time for beans. So I planted a few rows around the very edges to help just fix the nitrogen from all the corn that was here because they suck up a lot of nutrients. We have some really lovely new additions to the garden, some more planting room. I got these two planters on sale, bless. Um, but I finally have a place to plant some asparagus. I feel like because it's perennial and because it needs to grow for, I'd say at least two years to really start developing a good amount of asparagus for you, it needs a solid home. And you definitely don't want to move it once it's planted. So hopefully they really like it here. I also got some more room for some herbs. I've been really digging rosemary and using it for a lot of really fun projects. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. But I'm going to tell you now, we're going to need a lot more rosemary. So I'm thinking of turning quite a few beds actually into strictly herb beds. So once that happens, I'll be sure to give you guys an update. And with that, I'm actually going to leave you guys there. Dom is about to join me in the garden and we're going to go around and collect some seeds a lot of the perennials and the wildflowers are starting to die off so it's the perfect time to get some seeds so be on the lookout we might have some fun updates for you on the website soon um, but until then take care everyone sending you all so much love and light